Hey folks, it's Nate. If you've ever seen those cowl induction setups for the Jeep TJ or the XJ, and you were curious if maybe you could build one of those yourself, because to be honest, it just doesn't look that complicated, today's video is for you. Because I take some off-the-shelf parts from Amazon and take my stock air tube and I hack it all together and I make myself a cowl induction setup. So if you're on the fence as to whether you want to try to build one of these things yourself or just buy a kit, which to be honest, there are some advantages to just buying the kit and you'll see that in this video, uh, then stay tuned. So first, let's answer the question, what the heck is a cowl induction? So just like it sounds, it is a intake for your engine that comes from the cowl of the Jeep. Okay, so the Jeep Wrangler and the Jeep Cherokee both have space behind the firewall, but before the cab, the, where the vent for your HVAC system comes from inside the Jeep. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, there's a couple reasons. One, I wanted to get that big bulky airbox off the fender because I have a plan to raise my fenders or perhaps replace my fenders. And having the airbox out of the way is a great way to get started on that. And two, the stock airbox basically pulls air from the back of the radiator. So when the Jeep is at operating temperature, air coming into the system is already hot, possibly up to 195 degrees hot because it comes off the radiator. Now I've had some issues with this Jeep on hot days on the trail where it, it's, it just runs really poorly when it gets really hot, right? And it's not overheating, it just runs really badly. And I think that could be part of the reason. So this is in effect a cold air intake. Uh, and then of course the last is the intake is now even further away from the element. This isn't a snorkel, I'm, not, I'm absolutely not a snorkel. However, it does raise that point a little, a couple inches. At any rate, let's get started. I'm gonna show you what I started with and how I put this together. There was a bunch of trial and error in this video. Um, I'm gonna do my best to gloss over some of it because you don't really need to see that I bought the wrong air filter twice. The whole point of this video is so that you can go from stock air to this uh, without having to spend extra money on parts that don't work right. All right, so step one of this project is gonna to be to make some room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and get the hood and the cowl cover off of the Jeep. Let me get some tools out and we'll get this hood and cowl off. Now the hood and cowl removal aren't all that difficult. There's screws to the outside of the cowl on both sides, the driver and the passenger side. They're behind the weather stripping that seals the hood to the cowl. You might want to just remove the weather strip because I remove it later anyway. And to be honest, it's kind of in the way. So might as well just pull it out of there. Then take off the wipers. They're pretty easy. Uh, you just pull a little tab up and then the wiper pulls straight off. And there's four screws right at the base of the windshield and then one in the center of the vent. Once those are all out, you should be able to just pull the cowl right off. Underneath the cowl, you'll find four torque bolts. I think they're T20s. I took them out with a small impact. You can use whatever you want. Once they're out, the hood is essentially free. However, underneath the hood, there's a light and a ground and the plumbing for your windshield washers. You might want to disconnect those before you take those bolts out. I didn't. I also didn't get a good video of them. So, uh, you know, once those are disconnected, the hood pretty much comes free. It's a little harder to get off alone, but you can, you can manage. There's a kit you can buy from Trailhead Off-Road, which does exactly what I'm trying to do today. It's like a $200 or $300 kit. I'm going to try to do it as cheap as possible. Okay, now I have purchased two things from Amazon to make this happen. I will put links, no, sorry, one thing from Amazon, the other from Summit Racing. Uh, I will put links for links to both of them in the description of this video. The first thing is this air filter. This is a- Now, I came into this project with the wrong filter. So I spent a bit of time at the beginning of the video talking about how I'm gonna put this filter in place. 
The theory behind it is still valid, but just realize that the filter I am showing you here doesn't end up working out. So, cut me some slack. I'll fix it later. You see it's got a nice two and a half inch opening here. This existing air tube is two and a half inches. Uh, and then the other thing I bought is this aluminum coupler from Summit Racing. Aluminum coupler goes into this air intake, and then this can go into this stock air intake, okay? This whole thing gets removed. This, re this now becomes this air box, okay? Now, I don't want to just do that and let it hang in here, though, because all it's doing then is, sure, I've, I've, I've met step number one, which is delete this air box, but I have not improved step number two, or goal number two, which is to improve the quality of the air that's getting into my engine. For that, we need to get this out of the engine compartment. The way to do that, the easy way, hopefully, the way, the way Trailhead does it, is they move this filter up into the cowl here. Now, the Trailhead off-road filter is like 60 bucks. I could have just bought their filter and then went from, from there, uh, but I decided instead I'm gonna try to do this cheap, right, and share it with you guys. If this filter doesn't work out, I can always go back and buy the Trailhead filter. Now, what I wanna do, remember I said I could have bought a kit and done this? I wanna reuse this tube, okay? Notice how long it is and how it's got this flexible end to it. What I'm hoping is that I can loosen up the, the throttle body end of it, remove this end, and twist the whole thing back to the firewall. Once it's back at the firewall, I can go straight through Spoiler the alert. Towel. Attaching the filter directly to the end of the intake tube doesn't work out either. It does work, in theory. Uh, the problem is that the tube is way too long and doesn't get you to where you need to on the firewall. And again, I'll fix that later. Now, there are some things we have to remove. Down here, there's a ground which I'm gonna to have to reroute. And of course this here, this loom is gonna be in the way. So I'm gonna to try to work on getting those pulled out of the way. Once they're out of the way, then we'll see what we're working with. All right, so I basically decided that this wiring loom just should be disconnected and moved. I shouldn't say disconnected. It should be unanchored and moved out of the way. And then we're gonna figure out later what to do with it. Um, there are some brackets that these uh, push to or that these push-in connectors uh, hold the wiring, wiring loom to. And there's a couple of threaded studs that you have those uh, press-on connectors, right? So I basically loosened all those up and then I pulled the wiring loom out of the way. The next thing we have to deal with is there's a ground that's right in the way of where we want to put the filter. So it works out pretty well, actually, that the one of the supports that go from the firewall to the grill uh, the bolt that holds that in place is close enough to the right size for this ground. I just back that bolt out and move the ground over there. All right, so the next thing to do is to just make a hole through your firewall. Uh, you can look up the trailhead off-road instructions on how to do this because they are pretty much exactly what I ended up doing. Um, this is the part of the video where things really started to derail. So first I tried to make a circular hole, three and a half inches, no, three inches, uh, with a hole saw, which worked out well enough, except that I almost broke my wrist once. Ouch, I broke my wrist while I had it. I broke two drill bits. This, this was not a, a great time for hole sawing. So in the end, I ended up having to cut the hole larger and kind of square anyway. So the hole saw, unnecessary. Anyway, uh, once I got the hole drilled, I realized that the hole worked well enough for the blue filter that I had, but uh, the blue filter was too big to fit in the cowl. And uh, I tried a second filter that I had purchased, which I thought was not going to work because it was too big, because it was a three inch opening instead of a two and a half. And that also had the same problem. And the problem was that they were too deep and too bulky and they contacted the arm for the windshield wiper. I basically had to scrap both those filters and then I hunted around. I almost just went and bought a trailhead filter but decided to give one more filter a try, and that is what we're gonna talk about next. I found a K&N uh, cylinder-shaped filter that is similar in size to the cone filters that I bought, but smaller in diameter, right? Now, 
is this going to cause me issues with uh, is this going to cause issues with airflow? I don't know. We're going to find out, I suppose. Uh, but if you look, if you compare, this is that extension that I had bought. Uh, if you compare, this is the shorter of the two filters uh, from base to top. This one's a little bit taller, but it's a lot narrower, right? This, the outer diameter is a lot smaller. What that means is I have a lot more room to work with. All right, so what's the difference here? Number one, like I showed you, this filter is about the same, maybe a little taller than the cheap Chinese blue filter I've got here. But it's a lot narrower. So what that means is where this one, I was able to get it in here and through the firewall, but that's kind of it. That's kind of where it sits. I can't go any further through the firewall. This K&N filter, not only is it a, a more trusted brand, K&N, and made in America, and uh, well, there's lots of other reasons that you might trust K&N over top of a cheap Chinese filter you find on Amazon. Uh, while it's all those things, it's also much smaller. Specifically, this lower end is smaller. But what it does do is not only does it fit down here lower, even if I mount it exactly the same as the other filter, which was like this, I can mount it lower like this, which means maybe it'll clear here, but I'm not even going to try because I think it may still hit. This thing swings really low when it comes down. What it does allow me to do is this. I can sync it through the firewall, giving me tons of clearance here for that wiper arm linkage, right? So that's a big deal, right? What that means though is, so one, I cut that really big hole in the firewall. I probably didn't need to do that. If I were doing this over again, if I knew what filter I was going to buy, this is like a four inch outer diameter. I would have bought a four inch hole saw and just made a four inch hole through the firewall, which I believe is exactly what a uh, trailhead has you do, four, four and a half inch. Um, but then I could just sink the filter through, right? And maybe put a little grommet or something on there so it doesn't damage the filter as it vibrates or whatever. But I'll deal with that at some point. Now, what this means is on this side, I need something to contain this. So what I'm gonna do is build sort of a box that'll hold this filter uh, right here, right? And then this stock air tube is gonna come back this way and I'm gonna cut it off. And I've got this 45 degree soft uh, air tube. This'll fit right on here. What I don't know yet is if it's gonna fit on the tube. So I want to cut this off and then see if I can slide this onto there. If I can, the duct work is done. All I have to figure out is this box here, right? So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, this, I've got some sheet metal laying in the shop. That's what I was saying about fabrication. Uh, I will try to make a little box out of some sheet metal. See if I can, you know, I've, I don't really work with sheet metal much. So I could completely destroy the sheet metal. <laughs> All right, folks. Oh, hang on. All right, folks. After some experimentation, um, I decided that the right way to get this done. So one, I didn't show you this yet. After I cut this, I realized that it doesn't fit inside of this soft tube. So I started tinkering around with how do I adapt it. I thought maybe I could use PVC or ABS or something, which I have some of that laying around here. And then I thought, you know, maybe I could bore this out with a hole saw. I've seen that done on steel. I didn't know what it was gonna do here. I couldn't find any way to mock that or to work that with like my drill press or something. So I decided rather than lose a finger today, 
I would give up on the hole saw idea. And then I decided, this is plastic. I can deal with plastic, right? So what I did was, I cut it off, obviously. Sorry to hear the dog barking in the background. We have, a, we have a new puppy and the puppy gets anxious when she's separated from other people. Anyway, um, I took my, my angle grinder with a flapper wheel in it and I used it to basically bore this, or not bore this, but sand this down just a bit. And then as I started doing that, I realized that this stuff reacts to heat by melting and releasing fumes. That's why I had the mask on. Uh, so I put the mask on. Then I sanded it down good, and I'm probably gonna clean this real well so that I know there's no like crud that's gonna go in my air intake and end up in the engine. I don't know that little bits of plastic would hurt anything, but that seems like the sort of thing I don't want in there. Uh, but anyway, it didn't take much. You can see not a whole lot that I took it down, but now I can make an air intake out of this. This will fit on there well enough that I can get a clamp around it, and there we go. New air tube for the Jeep. This will this will go on to the the throttle body. This, of course, is at the wrong angle, but it'll go up through the cowl. There we go. The only thing left is I think it's the PV, PCV valve on the front of the engine that goes into the stock air box. I'm gonna have to like drill and tap or something and run it to here, uh, but that shouldn't be that big of a deal. I'll do that last. The next thing I have to do is fit this in the Jeep, see how it all sits, and then I need to build that box I was talking about. some work here this is gonna be my box what I did here is uh, and you should see some video of this I cut out a strip and then folded it into this shape now this shape should fit right in here once I have it assembled and it's a little tight at the moment but it's not fully assembled but it should fit in there I think Hope. <laughs> I should have tested that, I guess, before I started recording, but that's the goal. Should fit in here and it should hold the filter outward. Now I'm going to put a plate 
here with a hole through it that the filter will fit through. The mounting surface of the filter should fit through. And the purpose of that is so that if I want to, I can change the filter without taking the cowl off, right? I'll be able to pop the plate off, pull the filter into the engine bay, change the filter, pop it back in. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I am going to try to tack weld that seam. And then once that's done, I'm gonna to try to fit it in here. Uh, if it doesn't fit, I'm gonna be very disappointed. <laughs> All right, so I turned off the camera for a little bit to work on my bracket, or my box, whatever you want to call this, uh, mainly because the battery in the camera died again. Uh, this is my box. This didn't quite come out as perfect as I had it visioned in my mind, right? So, I mean, in all, it is what it is. It is what I wanted. I'm going to make the plate so it mounts on here. I'm going to drill little holes in here to put either self-tapping screws in, or perhaps uh, I'll weld a little... Weld is a bad idea. Uh, I will do something to attach some studs on here so that I can put the plate on. I don't know exactly how that's all going to work just yet, but uh, this is going to be pop riveted, I think, to the firewall. So I'm going to get it in place and pop rivet in place, which means I need to find spots to drill holes in this little lip on the back here. Now, obviously this thing looks pretty rickety. That's because I built it knowing that I was going to have to trim it uh, to fit. There's a curve to the side there where the vent is. And so that's trimmed off. That's gonna fit in there. The filter goes through it. I had to trim the firewall a little bit more to make room for this side of the filter as it goes through the firewall. But, you know, this is the trial and error we live with. This is getting to be quite the time sink. I wanna let you guys know that because part of why I'm doing this is to show you guys, is it worth building your own or buying the kit? I've got a couple hours into this at this point. I've got a little bit of trial and error into this. Of course, you will have this as a guide to go off of if you want to do the same, but this piece right here is tricky. So unless you have some fabrication skills, and maybe if they're better than mine, <laughs> this piece is the hard part, okay? So if you figure this out, the rest of it was relatively easy. You hack off the thing, get the parts that I used, and off you go. Um, this is still proving to be difficult. So. My next thing is, oh, uh, I mentioned I want to try to weld it. Welding did not work so well on this, mainly because my welder is set up for much thicker materials. So if you're going to try to weld it, uh, you're going to want a welder that's designed for thinner materials, maybe a TIG even. Um, it just, the Yes Welder with <laughs> O35 wire in it, because that's all I've got, uh, just didn't do the job. It's holding. Right? I was able to get it to hold, but you can see it burn through. I don't know if you can see that that well on the camera. What I'm going to do is probably paint this next, and then let it sit overnight, and maybe I'll get back to this tomorrow. The next step is to make the cover for this box. Uh, the plan is to make the cover removable so that I can take the filter out without taking the cowl off again. Um, so my plan is to make a hole through it and sort of like a semicircle and then find, figure out some way to attach that to the front of the box. The way I think I want to attach it to the front of the box is to make sort of a slit so that the bottom of the plate can kind of uh, slide on to the bottom of the box, and then I'll put a self-tapping screw or something at the top to hold it in place. So that's what I'm doing here. So it turns out I do not have what I need. <laughs> Surprise, that's the MO of this project to, uh, to make this work. However, I can test, I can get stuff fitted to the point where I can do my test and get things buttoned up. I just can't drive this anywhere until I go to the hardware store and get the opposite of one of these. So this is a, I think maybe three eighth, maybe half inch barb uh, female. I need the male. Um, but the goal would be, this is the stock tube that went from there to the airbox. I cut off the end that was all stretched out. This fits in here nicely. 
I would basically uh, fit this in here. See? Um, so that size barb is what I need. And then I need the female or male version. The male version, I would then drill a hole in here and heat it up so that the plastic gets a little bit soft and then thread it in, right? And then, you know, maybe up here somewhere, I don't know, I'd put it somewhere uh, where it's out of the way. And then I'll just take this, this stock tube, or perhaps I'll buy a new tube, I don't know. I'll probably use the stock one. This is the end that went on to the valve. I'll just pop it back on there. And then this valve isn't keyed in any particular way. I'll just turn it around and uh, run it to there. For my test, I'm just gonna leave it open because it's just gonna run for a little bit here in the shop and I don't think that'll be a big deal. So the moment you've all been waiting for, is this worth it? So the good news is Trailhead Off-Road has essentially an easy button for this mod. You buy their kit, you cut a hole, you install their parts, you take off your old, that's the wrong order. You buy their kit, you take off your old intake, you cut a hole, you install their parts, and you have essentially what I've done here. A lot easier, because you don't have to fabricate anything. You cut a big hole in your firewall. That's really the hardest part of their kit. However, if you're like me and you like to do things yourself, you enjoy doing this stuff yourself, uh, and you're a cheap bugger, this might actually be an option for you. Now, I did have to fabricate that, uh, what do you want to call it, intake box uh, between the firewall and the cowl. That was quite frustrating. I was halfway through that. Uh, I didn't get all of it on film because I was so frustrated I turned off the camera. I almost scrapped the whole thing and just bought their kit or started over from scratch. Um, and having built it now, I can see how I might have done it differently, but I wasn't going to restart, right? So, um, I don't know. To each their own, I suppose. I enjoyed doing this, although I did get very frustrated with that box. Um, otherwise, it was actually not that hard. I took the stock intake, I cut it off, I cut the tube, I found that elbow, uh, I found the right filter. Now that I have found the parts that you need, and I will link them at the bottom in the description of this video on Amazon, uh, now that I've found all that, you could replicate what I did, minus the box, you'll have to build your own box, minus that, you can re replicate what I did here pretty darn easily, right? So I'll obviously I have that one piece to finish up that I talked about, the, uh, the PCV. Now, did it help? is the big question. So at the beginning of all this, I hooked up my Bluetooth OBD reader and I started the engine and I let it idle here in the garage for half an hour. And I recorded the output on my Android tablet connected to the little OBD Bluetooth reader thing. Uh, I took the intake temperature, the intake air temperature sensor, which is the one that's right there in the tube. And I took the uh, coolant temperature and the revs and I recorded the whole thing and I'm gonna show them here somewhere um, I did that at the beginning of the whole thing while it was still in the stock airbox and the neat thing is right when the thermostat opens and you see the coolant temperature drop because the thermostat opened and it went through the radiator and the radiator started doing its job you see the intake temperature jump a couple degrees which to me is pretty telling right that the, the stock airbox definitely pulls in hot air from the, uh, the radiator. Uh, however, with the intake rerouted like this, I haven't reviewed all the data yet. I'll say that um, it was a little colder the day that I first recorded, the day I did the first test. A little warmer today. It's not terribly warmer, maybe 5 or 10 degrees warmer. Um, the maximum temperature that the engine, or I should say that the intake got up to, was just under, if I remember correctly, just under 100 degrees on the stock intake. And it was just over 90 degrees now that it's been rerouted. Now I have done nothing other than move it to the cowl. I haven't done anything else to try to cut down on heat. I could. I could probably like wrap this exhaust or wrap the intake or something, right? I've seen people do that. I don't know if I'm going to go that far. 
if I got an improvement out of it, great. If I didn't, I still got that air box out of the, off the fender well. I mean, look at all the space it's put here. I could put my air tank here if I really wanted to now, but my goal is to be able to have some more um, freedom with my fenders, which is exactly what uh, I'm gonna do. Now, um, having said all that, honestly, the trailhead kit isn't that much money. It's like 250 bucks. You'd probably get it done in an afternoon instead of two weeks like it took me. I did some trial and error, obviously. You wouldn't have to do trial and error like I did. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to ramble on too much, but really, this is a trade-off. What's your time worth? I enjoyed doing this project. Uh, I didn't so much enjoy that air box. If I maybe could have just bought Trailhead's box and then did the rest of it myself, but they don't sell the box separate. Um, you know, to each their own, right? So anyway, like I said, all the parts are going to be in the description of the video if you want to try to do this yourself. Um, I did also include, and I'll cut that in here, a little bit of uh, an example of the sound difference, right? So with the intake moved, the you can hear it sucking air through that cowl when you first start the engine, and you can hear it inside the cab. So it's a thing you're going to have to get used to. It did quiet down once the engine warmed up, and I included a, uh, I took another video of that. So it's just things to be aware of. So the first thing I want to call attention to, I have the Jeep running now, and listen. I don't know if that comes through on video, but basically you can hear the intake through the the cowl, which, uh, I mean, I don't know if that's a problem for you or not, but let's see how that sounds in the engine bay, or in the cab. I put the window up. You can hear it. So is that a problem for you? I mean, I'd imagine that does that with any cowl then, or with any cowl induction system. All right, so it's been running for 10 minutes or so. My, my goal is to let it run for about 30 minutes because that's what I did at the beginning, but it's been running for 10 minutes and you don't hear it as much anymore. You hear? I guess the engine just demands more air when it starts up. I guess that makes sense, right? So now that we're... I don't even hear it in here anymore. So I guess when it starts up, you'll hear it. So um, I think that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to join our community, there's a Discord community for SWB Crawler. It's on swbcrawler.com slash community, if I remember correctly. Just go to swbcrawler.com and you should be able to find it. If you want shirts like this sweatshirt or other cool or funny off-road related uh, tees and whatnot, go to swbcrawler.com. I've got a whole bunch on there. Uh, the store is right there. Priced about as well as I can price them. Uh, the, the funds go to fuel the channel. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that little notification bell if you want to know when I do things like this. Uh, really, folks, I can't thank you enough for watching. I appreciate that, that you're here. And with all that having been said, folks, remember, get out there and wheel. I'll catch you in the next one.